guess what happened today? We went down to the Jordan River, you know, where John the Baptist had been baptizing people. But I was there. There was a crowd gathered. Everybody was standing around and watching. And we could hear what they were thinking. I had this sense of feeling like, who is John the Baptist? Is he the Messiah? You know, we've been hearing stories about the Messiah coming for a long time. John also could hear what they were thinking as he looked at the crowd and he said to us, I am not the Messiah. What greater is coming? Who will baptize you? Not the water, but the Holy Spirit of the Father. Everybody just stood and looked. What is he talking about? So you're standing there. All of a sudden, this person came walking down to the river of Jordan. And he walked up to the John Baptist. He said, I hear for you baptize me. John looked and said, Me? I am not worthy to baptize you. I am not worthy to tie the thoughts on your sandals. You should be baptizing me. Oh, I'm dead, you know who it was? It was Jesus. He remember. He was the son of, he is the son of Mary and Joseph. The one that they were looking for when he was little, they found him in the temple. Was it was hard to believe. Jesus. The Messiah. We were not, we were not sure it's that was Messiah. <laughs> he walked into the Jordan River and he stood and John the Baptist baptized him. He stood up and the heavens opened and down came the dove that landed on him. And a voice from heaven spoke and said, You are my beloved in you I am. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to thee, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. During this season between Advent and Lent, we leave away in the manger, no proof for his bed behind, and we turn to stories of glowing acknowledgement. Traveling wise men and stars and doves and voices and water and wine and transfiguration. On this first Sunday after Epiphany, it is traditional to remember the moment which God recognizes Jesus as the one to honor his official entry into ministry. Some scholars call these epiphany stories, stories of sin places. Places where the boundary between the ordinariness of our lives and the realm of the holy become porous. We get to pass through. We get to pass through these common places of our lives and discover something remarkable, even holy. Water is something that is quite common and ordinary, but in scripture, it is the place where God is experienced over and over. In scripture, water calls people to enter one way and to exit another. Whether Jacob is crossing the river to be reunited with Esau or the people of Israel crossing out of Egypt into the sea or later entering the land promised through the waters of the Jordan. These immersions and ascents are key 
components in the Christian story. And in our tradition, baptism is for us a means of entering covenant community. Jesus receives his own endowment for ministry by entering into the waters and as a result, receives the empowerment of the Spirit. Joycelyn just took us to the banks of the River Jordan where Jesus is being baptized and here he is going up in the water and coming up out of the water and while he prays his own post-baptismal prayer, suddenly the heavens open and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove and a voice comes from heaven speaking to Jesus but in a way that all who are gathered can hear, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. So can I be honest about something? Yeah. Even though we are examining these thin places where we get a glimpse of God, for most of us it presents a problem. The problem? Well, most of us have never seen a huge shining star in the east or a spirit descend like a dove or heard a divine voice booming from the clouds. And if you're like me, you've never watched water become wine. Although I profess a belief in a still speaking God, I have not experienced the eternal one, but Bishop Spawn calls it the ground of all being. In any of the ways that the epiphany stories describe. So here's the thing. Here, when we look at scripture, we are not being asked to suspend our disbelief. You know, we suspend our disbelief when we go to the movies and for two hours, we agree to believe that elephants can fly, that a 90 pound woman can defeat extraterrestrial monsters, and that any problem can be solved with a good soundtrack and automatic weapons. <laughs> we are not being asked to suspend our disbelief, but to look deeper. This scripture is to let us know that those thin places between the ordinary and the holy do exist and that God is just on the other side of this thin veil of reality, waiting and watching and urging. I ask you to consider what is beneath this tale, the wonder of purpose, the purity of purpose, the miraculous, awe-inspiring part was that Jesus threw his reputation aside to get dumped along with sinners, revolutionaries, enemies of the state. And our creator, mother, father, God, chose that grimy, unsettling moment to part the clouds and name Jesus as the divine offspring. I believe God was pleased because Jesus connected himself with what we call back in the day movement folks. People like those who were following John. People who had decided no matter the cost to be on the side of what is right. Not to get somewhere, not to get something, but because they had arrived at a conclusion that the way to live a full life, the way to bring the kingdom here was to serve, was to work, was to press onward. And for me, that's the shining star. That is the place where the water of the ordinary places of our life becomes intoxicating. For this is the place I have seen the peace of God descend softly on those in wet places, crossing rivers and being hosed down. This is where I have heard the voice of the Holy through God's contemporary prophets shining on steps speaking 
of mountaintop moments, illuminated in auditorium speaking of moral callings. absorb the profound poetry of this moment. I understand the light, the dove, the gleam emanating from those special ones. I understand it all through the lens of my experience because I have witnessed people standing in their purpose. I have seen people submit to God's calling and that's the revelation here. That Jesus, while he was sure of his purpose, he was also sure and respectful of the purpose of John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist had a role in working toward the liberation of a people oppressed by Rome. And we need to look no further than today's goings on to understand how extraordinary it is for people to go against the grain. How extraordinary it is for people to stand for right against might. How extraordinary it is for people of fame and celebrity to be humble. Because John the Baptist was a celebrity. He had all the right factors to create interest, even obsession, among those people who had encountered him or just heard him. He was young, he was strong, he was eccentric, he was intriguing, he was tantalizing. But here, John the Baptist, a celebrity, but he knows what his purpose is. And he also is able to acknowledge the purpose of his younger cousin, Jesus. And here we have Jesus fully embracing his purpose. That causes me to ask myself, how do we find our purpose? I mean, what are we willing to enter so that we may emerge with greater purpose and direction? Are we willing to go to those common places to be reminded that we too have purpose? Are we willing to risk being marginalized to be on the right side of things? Because purpose in the simplest sense is being in tune with both the world around you and God's voice in it. I mean, by God's voice, I mean that undeniable nudge we get when we know we're doing what's right for us. Jesus, I suspect, had many voices in his life before that voice he heard at the river. He had parents, he had relatives, he had friends, he had rabbis who kept pointing the way for a boy and then a younger man who was discovering his purpose. We too have voices in our lives pointing the way for us. And if we want to hear God's purpose, then we have to make sure we surround ourselves with people who know us, who know our story, and who are not threatened by the call we have on our lives. We listen, we observe, and we hear the subtle voice of God's purpose. Now that voice can be as wild as pointing us to a new career or as tame as moving us to an active service or showing compassion to a friend. Or maybe it's to make peace with an enemy or just to make a phone call to write a check to speak for justice. Whatever it is for you, that urging requires something to shift, something to be redirected. Some part of you has to submit for that to happen. I think that 
that's why before Jesus can set off to fully achieve his purpose, he has to be immersed. He has to be entirely in the flow of what is happening. He has to be in the flow of John's radicalism. He has to be in the flow of the needs and the hopes of the people. He has to be in the flow of God's plan. <clears throat> he has to be immersed. He has to be baptized. And his surrender so complete, his willingness so pure, that the air shifted. And God herself has to respond. You know what? You did good. That's my child. I am so well pleased. So although this Sunday is a Sunday when we all are called to remember our baptism. For most of us, our baptism wasn't so remarkable. No doves. <laughs> No celebrities, just a few drops of water. You were dressed up, parents and sponsors, a candle, some affirmative words from the congregation, and even a little applause. But Jesus' baptism reminds us that we should not get too comfortable with our baptism for this very tame act can have life-changing results. We know it's life-changing because, unfortunately, we know how this very story ends. We know when we immerse ourselves into anything, there is a risk. Yes, to opening yourself, but also to losing yourself. For baptism is a boundary crossing. That's why the river is such a compelling image, because rivers mark boundaries. Baptism is God's presence where we might not want God so close. And if we're honest, the heavens opening can be good news or not such good news. People witnessing the mark of God on your life can be good news or not such good news. For danger will lurk when your purpose is to free, to unbind, to heal, to restore. And there are consequences. The forces that seek to imprison, to bind, to destroy, and to dominate will come after you just as they came after Jesus. But we say we are Christians. And as Christians, our baptism joins us to Christ. Just like Jesus, we are baptized as a way of affirming we share in being named and claimed by God. That's a problem. That's a big problem because we say that we affirm we belong to God, but the world insists that we belong to ourselves. We belong to our employer, we belong to our jobs, we belong to our family, our schools, our school team, we belong to the government of our country, and each of those entities has its own purpose for us. But if we say we align with God's purpose for our lives, if we see ourselves as being children of the Most High God, if we see ourselves as instruments of God's plan, then we no longer live just for ourselves or our jobs or our government or the pursuit of status. We now live to, for, and with God. That's a problem. That's dangerous. So as we 
remember our baptism this day, let us remember it is also a call to live dangerously, beloved and purpose-filled, obedient to the God we say we serve. Just as it was with Jesus, let it be with us. Baptism says we are claimed by someone special and we are called to do something special. And the scripture said, and the spirit descended upon him as a dove. And so does the spirit descend on you and me softly, gently, affirming each of us calling us not simply to be God's children, but also to be God's helpers in a wounded, weary world, claimed and called. And so this baptism of our Lord Sunday, remember your baptism and live into your calling, live into your purpose so that the voice of God will be heard in the rustling of the leaves and in the flow of the water, saying, you're my child. You're doing great. Let us pray. Oh God, who claims us as your own and who calls us to be your partners in the world, Descend as a dove, rest on us, and work through us.